Hello, welcome to Lisha's Spicy Kitchen again. Many of my friends have been asking me what are the special ingredients needed to make Sichuanese dishes and how to use them. So today I'm going to talk about some basic ones that will set you up for making most of Sichuanese and in general Chinese dishes. Today, I'm going to introduce altogether eight ingredients. They are soy sauce, broad bean paste, cooking wine, vinegar, cassia bark, star anise, rock sugar, green and pink citron pepper. First of all, soy sauce. You are probably already familiar with this seasoning if you are a fan of Asian food because it's so widely used in Asian cooking. Soy sauce is a liquid sauce made from fermented soybeans, grain and brine. The fermentation gives out a unique savoury flavour that people find it difficult to describe and refer it as umami flavour. In Sichuan, the soy sauce used to be one type that gives out both the salty flavour and also colours the food. In recent years, the Cantonese style of soy sauce has gained great popularity and the soy sauce now often comes in two types, the light and the dark soy sauce. The light one is the main seasoning. It gives the food a savoury flavour with a relatively pale colour. So this salts the food. Dark soy sauce is used mainly to give a rich dark reddish colour to the food and it tastes a little bit sweet. So it doesn't make food salty and mainly colours the food. Both light and dark soy sauces are often used in stir fries, braised dishes and stews or as a dip. Lee Kam Ki is a good brand for soy sauce that we can easily find here in the UK. And you may also come across the Kikkoman brand. This is also a very good Japanese soy sauce brand. But bear in mind, it is the combination of light and dark soy sauce, so they will slightly color your food as well. Next, vinegar. Vinegar is also an essential flavoring in Sichuanese cooking. It's mainly made from wheat bran, rice, and a number of other grains. The color of the vinegar is a darkish red brown and it often has such great fragrance, it smells delicious. It is ideal for seasoning cold dishes, added to the stir fries, stews, noodle dishes or as a dip. People love dipping in vinegar when eating dumplings in northern China. In terms of flavor, the Chinese vinegar tastes a bit more sour than some of the Western vinegars, uh, for example, balsamic vinegar, and it also will lightly color your food. Zhenjiang vinegar is a brand that I often get in London. It is also a very famous brand in China. If you've cooked Chinese dishes before, you may have noticed that Many recipes call for the use of cooking wine. The cooking wine is made from glutinous rice, water, wheat and yeast. It has an amber color and often has an alcoholic level around 15%. Cooking wine is usually used to treat and refine the flavor of meat, poultry and fish. And it is mainly to dispel their rankness. So we use the cooking wine in marinades before cooking or add it into stir fries or making braised or stewed dishes. Shaoxing cooking wine is highly regarded, made in the Shaoxing city of the eastern province of China. I find that M&S does small bottles of Shaoxing wine, light and dark soy sauce and they come in 150 milliliter bottles. I think these are very handy to have if you do not cook Chinese very often and then you may not need the larger quantity ones. All these liquid seasoning I mentioned earlier can be stored in a cool and dark place. Keep them sealed. They should last more than six months in my experience. If you do not use them often, you can keep them in the fridge and they will last longer. Now let's talk about the spices. The Sichuanese pepper is the most distinctive spice in Sichuanese cuisine. They are the fruits of small shrubs that are grown in the mountainous regions in Sichuan. They look like small berries and have pink skin and black seeds inside. The seeds have no flavor and we usually just get rid of them before cooking. Although they look quite similar to the black pepper, those two are not related at all. Sichuan pepper is a member of the citrus family. Surprising, huh? It does have a hint of citrus flavor too. Sichuan pepper has a powerful aroma. Just smelling it makes my mouth water. If you chew on it, you will feel a sensation of tingleness and the numbing feeling will last a few minutes. 
So in Sichuan, we say if the peppers are not tingle enough, they're not worth buying. So how to use them? We often sizzle the pepper in oil with dried chilies to add flavor to stir fries. It can also be roasted or grounded, added in a dip or as a sprinkle for cold and hot dishes. Hanyuan Sichuan pepper is one of the most famous brands grown in the Hanyuan County in the middle of Sichuan province. There are also products made from Sichuan pepper such as grounded pepper powder, Sichuan pepper oil, Sichuan pepper salt, and these also have become popular seasoning ingredients. Another variety of Sichuan pepper is the green ones. It's a relatively new variety and has a milder taste to the pink ones. It also numbs your mouth, but just not as strong. Green Sichuan pepper is particularly paired with fish and rabbit dishes, but they can also be used just as regular pink pepper in other dishes. Next, broth in paste. This is also indispensable for Sichuanese cuisine. I've dedicated another video to introduce this paste along, so if you haven't watched it, please do check it out in the link above. Broth bean paste is now quite easy to get in Chinese shops abroad these days, and they even come in small gift packages. Very cute. Now, I'd like to talk about two other dried spices. One is cassia bark. It is the dried bark of the Chinese cassia tree. The bark comes in long and thick strips, and you can break it by hand easily. It may look like cinnamon sticks, but they're not the same thing. It has a similar spiced flavor, and it is a little bit bitter, whereas cinnamon is more sweet. So we often use cassia bark for braised and stewed dishes, as a spice just to enhance the flavor. Do use the cassia bark in small amounts because it can get bitter and overpower the whole dish. Next is star anise. Star anise is another popular spice. It is the fruit of a shrub that often has seven to 10 pointing pods. In Chinese, we call it eight horns because of its distinctive shape. Star anise imparts a licorice flavor that is similar to fennel, but it's more sweet. We use it to enhance the flavor of meat mainly, so it's often added into stews and braised dishes. And the flavor of star anise is also very strong, so do make sure you only use it in small portions so as not to overwhelm other flavors. The last ingredient of the day is one of my favorites, rock sugar. We call it ice sugar in Chinese because these cubes look like ice. There is also rock sugar that comes in light brown color and much bulkier as well. I used to put them everywhere to sweeten things in my tea, drinks, stews and soups. And in cooking, it's often used to get caramelized sugar that could coat the food with a lovely brown reddish color and also gives a pleasant sweetness. This is today's top eight ingredients you will need for Chinese cooking. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave me comments below if you have any questions or if you'd like to know more about other ingredients so I can talk about them in my future videos. Don't forget to check out the description area if you'd like to know where to find these ingredients. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would be very helpful to me. Thanks for watching and see you next time in Nisha's Spicy Kitchen. Bye for now.